All right, so this is a suggestion via Discord. The name of the video is CRAM Air Defense is so hot right now. Basically, in layman terms, if you guys have been following what's been going on over there, right, Middle East, not specifically, you'll realize that uh, Israel has an Iron Dome. Uh, that's basically what that is, okay? Uh, the CRAM Air Defense. Um, what's interesting is, I've heard, uh, that the United States of America would be potentially looking in the future, at least, uh, to start implementing CRAM systems all around the United States of America, but I think I think it's going to be excessively expensive, another way for a tax grab, most likely, right? But um, it would absolutely be intriguing for them to sit basically idle for a very long time. Because, again, guys, when was the last time somebody tried to do something like this to us? I mean, I get it. You, you, we need it there, just in case it does happen. But that's a lot of money, okay? Think about that for a second. But either way, let's go ahead and check this out immediately. Uh, this, the name of the channel uh, this video is coming from is uh, Briefly Explained. Uh, Let's check it out. Kind of sounds like a warthog. Indirect fire from mortars, missiles, and artillery shells is a very serious concern for armed forces in battle. But thanks to the point defense systems like the C-RAM, indirect fire of this nature may have met its match. The C-RAM, standing for counter rocket artillery. Firstly, how much how much of this bullets cost? Artillery and mortar is an air-to-ground missile one. defense system that Let's detects and destroys incoming rockets, artillery, and mortar rounds before they reach the ground. It uses a powerful machine gun that can fire up to 4,500 rounds per minute and take down close-range rockets as well as missiles and artillery shells. CRAM was created by U.S. weapon manufacturers to assist the U.S. Army in countering insurgent and militia missile, mortar... $30 a bullet. <laughs> These guys, no. Maybe we don't need this. And drone attacks in Iraq and Afghanistan. They'll find a way to Both buy it. places though. where the U.S. had waged a war after its 9-11 attacks. The CRAM weapon system is a system of systems that has intercepted incoming rocket, artillery, and mortar rounds at forward operating bases and important targets in Iraq and Afghanistan, according to the U.S. Army. Oh, wait, let's do the bath. It saved the U.S. Air Force from what were the most horrific and exhausting days at Kabul for American forces. The Federation of American Scientists Military Analysis Network, MAN. If you guys want to know, okay, um, the cost of operating this machine per second is uh, $2,250. Okay. Define seven CRAM functions. Sense, alert, reply, intercept, command and control, shape and protect. CRAM has a naval counterpart from which it stems. This counterpart is called the Phalanx Close-In Weapon System, or CWIS for short. CWIS proved extremely successful at deterring incoming artillery as well as opposing gunboats. As such, the military concluded that a land-based variant of the system was needed. The CRAM was then developed, and it has since its inception protected many sites from artillery fire. CRAM finished development, integration, and testing in April 2005 using this system of system strategy. What's this area Unlike of operation? The CWIS, which is permanently how, how fixed is on a ship, the CRAM is mounted on a trailer and fired remotely. It gives it a lot more flexibility and agility. When a threat's identified, the weapon system identifies, evaluates, tracks, engages, and assesses battle damage automatically. One key distinction between CRAM and CWIS is the use of self-destructing shells. While CWIS operates at sea, shells. where the possibility of friendly fire is remote, CRAM is used on the ground in close proximity to the very forces it's stationed to protect. CRAM rounds are designed to detonate after a certain distance, preventing them from flying several miles and eventually striking the ground. That makes a lot of sense. To avoid collateral damage on the ground, CRAM employs additional tracking sensors such as the lightweight counter mortar round and Q-36 target acquisition radar from the U.S. Army. Multiple incoming shots can be targeted, tracked, prioritized, and eliminated before they hit the ground. They also provide a warning system for forces nearby. Both CRAM and CWIS use the M61 Vulcan Gatling gun. The M61 is a six-barrel, 20-millimeter cannon with a typical rate of fire up to 6,000 rounds per minute. Developed in the early 1950s, the gun was standardized as the M61 in 1956. The U.S. Army used the M61 and the M167 and M163 air defense systems and as the primary gun system on the F-14, F-15, F-16, and F-18 fighters. The gun's also used as the tail gun on the B-52H bomber, while a lightweight variant is used on the F-22 Raptor fighter. As you might expect, such a sophisticated piece of kit does not come cheap, 
Each CRAM system costs ahead, somewhere in the ahead. region of 10 to $15 million, depending on the final spec of the units purchased. Yeah, we're about to buy like a million of these guys. But that's only the cost to initially acquire the technology. Okay. With such a massive rate of fire, this unit literally burns through oh, yeah, bullets. Yeah, yeah. Depending on the number of munitions spent, a typical engagement with a single missile could range between thirty and sixty thousand dollars. So if it sees a missile, we spend sixty thousand dollars. I mean, I would rather the missile not hit a, its target, obviously, right? But I'm just not sure that we need these everywhere. Okay, uh, I would say like around like um, like priority areas, maybe specifically, guys. But again, this is a lot of money. And keep this in mind here: the people that are operating these machines are not making anywhere near the amount of money that's being wasted uh, on a target that. Um, May not be there, right? I don't know how, what the misfire rate is, guys, but... The U.S. military has only one other weapon system that can outshoot the phalanx in terms of rounds per minute. This is no other than the M134 minigun, which can dish out 6,000 rounds per minute. However, the M134 minigun, which can be mounted from helicopters to Humvees, shoots the 7.62 millimeter round, which is almost half the size of the 20 millimeter. A CRAM system is composed of several components, which are all essential to its successful operation. The primary components include a radar system that detects the incoming enemy projectile and provides information on its location and trajectory. Missile launch platforms are also necessary to allow for a quick counter-reaction time when deployed. Other components of a CRAM system may include infrared sensors, computers, communication systems, and reactive methods such as weaponized smoke or decoys. A CRAM system protects land-based assets from airborne threats, such as aircraft or drones. A CRAM system can accurately detect and track projectiles when equipped with the proper components, allowing for an effective countermeasure response. Oh, they're super active. It can also active. provide early warning of an attack, giving personnel time to take shelter or react appropriately. Overall, a well-managed CRAM defense system can significantly reduce the risk of destruction from enemy forces. The CRAM weapon system has some other perceived weaknesses too. For example, it takes around five seconds to acquire, lock onto, and engage a threat. It also five has seconds. a fairly short effective range of between 100 and 1,000 meters. Okay, that was the main question I had here. Um, so yeah, we can't order enough of these then, because to be honest, based off how it sounds, um, it would need to be what, every 1,000 meters? Because that's not a gigantic distance, guys. These weaknesses aside, it's shown itself to be one of the most effective anti-missile, mortar, and artillery defense systems in the world. I can imagine on the, for on this the boat, reason, guys. it'll likely remain an important player for many armed forces around the world for many years to come. The engineering of that machine is spectacular. Showing us like close up. Like guys, it's a magnificent looking thing. Uh, also, extremely magnificent uh, performing thing. It works very well in application based off what we've seen at least. Uh, how the Iron Dome functions. Alright guys, we're gonna we're gonna stop it here. We're, they're just showing basically footage of uh, like some B-roll of the actual object itself. Now, um, this is an incredibly scary machine. I think it would probably uh, have the ability to stop many countries or, or, or individuals from trying to do things uh, to the United States of America, right? But the problem here is, is guys, 
not within the last, what, over a hundred years, guys, we have not fought anything in the United States of America. Like anytime something happens, we just destroy Europe, literally, right? So the last gigantic kerfuffles we had, we don't do things here at, at all. We do everything somewhere else, or mainly Europe. The last two, uh, you know, world wo world kerfuffles, let's say, guys, right? Um, absolutely. Um, but again, so I'm not going to sit here and say after seeing it now, yeah, it would be great to have them around some areas in the United States of America that could possibly um, be targets, right? But I just definitely wouldn't say that we need a lot of these, uh, specifically with the terrible range they have, right? Um, because we would need too many of them. W where are they going to be? Yes. Like every thousand meters, we're going to have one of these $15 million um CRAM basically being pulled by another vehicle that, that you could basically get on Gov Planet right now for ten thousand dollars, guys. That's that's my biggest issue here. Everything costs so much for some reason. Like a screw, for example. Let's say you're building a chair. Uh this chair for the government is gonna cost I don't know, $75 million for, the, for that one chair uh, because the screws themselves are special, right? But then once they hit the, uh, the secondary market, Gulf Planet or any of these other uh, places where you can go to basically purchase, uh, you know, um, government-used objects, they, they sell for basically nothing, right? Um, that's kind of my dilemma. Obviously, they're not going to sell a CRAM system to the public, um, but all these Humvees and Hummers and, and all these newer... Uh, modern, more modern uh, military vehicles. Yeah, they're all for sale, guys. Uh, sale for basically nothing, for pennies on a dollar. Pennies on a dollar, it is. Um, I think that's uh, my my issue is waste in this context, at least. A lot of it is waste. Right? But it's an absolutely brilliant feat of engineering, though. It is definitely that. It's definitely brilliant, guys. Uh, but all right, listen, you guys all have an absolutely amazing day. Enjoy your day. Thoroughly. Guys, before we go, are you guys subscribed to the other channels? Logical Movie Reviews with Mr. L. Boyd along with Mr. L. Boyd Music. Both are found in the description. Check it out.